everybody. Sorry for the delay. We had some technical issues. Um, I've got my laptop pulled up here so that I can respond to you guys while we're doing this. So just give me a second because i got to connect into that because um, I can't see the phone because it's turned around the opposite direction. So just give me a second while I set this up and that way we can get some people on and everything. I'm so excited. Thank you so, so much for being here with us. Um, I hope you all have got your paints. If you don't and you just want to kick back with your glass of wine and just watch, check it out, see how we do. I am absolutely cool with that. Um, I just need to get clicked on here. That way I can interact with you guys um, while we're going through this and ask some questions and stuff like that. Uh, my whole reason for doing this, um, you know, uh, we've been so busy doing painting parties all the time and everything like that. And it got to a point where I was managing the painting way more often. I, I apologize that I keep looking off screen. I'm really trying to find this post so I can interact with you guys, but I can't seem to find it. Hey, Joey, would yeah. you mind getting that set up for me? Yeah. And that way I can talk to them instead of talking to my laptop. So um, anyway, I wanted to start this uh, just to kind of get back to the basics of why I started the whole company in the first place and um, what I really love to do, which is paint. Um, a long time in my life, people have said, oh, I wish I could do that and things like that. And in my brain, I always thought, well, it's just about a matter of steps and processes that you have to, um, you know, go through in order to learn what to set up and what to paint and where to paint it in order to get the desired effect. Um, and, it's, and I kind of relate it to people that tell me a lot about oh, I can't paint or I can't draw or whatever, I always say, well, you probably don't know how to process a mortgage either, but you have a person that walks you through that process and that's what I am. So I'm basically your mortgage loan officer for artistic creativity. Um, so I just wanted to start doing these and we're gonna do these once a week on Tuesdays at eight o'clock. Oh, is this done? No. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, so we're going to do it once a week on Tuesdays at 8 o'clock. I'm going to pick a new painting each week. Um, obviously, we have over 200 and some paintings on our website, so you couldn't possibly get through all of them. But it's kind of to show you what I'm doing, why I do it, and how much fun you can have, and give you guys an opportunity to participate uh, in doing painting, because I know for me... Uh, growing up, it would have been amazing to have something like this, um, even through my 20s, uh, before this whole concept even became a business for me. I, I just enjoy painting, and it's so much fun. And, um, yeah, so that's what we're here for. And as soon as the uh, laptop gets set up so I can interact with you guys, we'll go with that. But instead... While that's happening, I will go ahead and talk to you about the paints that you need to have if you're painting with us tonight. Um, so again, my name is April. Hello, I'm the owner of Apple Pie Painting. And uh, you really only ever need five basic colors to achieve any of the paintings that we have on our website. Um, and that's red, yellow, blue, black, and white. And I don't know if you can see that. I'm, I can tip it for a second, but then the paint's going to start draining down the plate. So uh, the reason I say that you only need these five painting uh, colors is because you can mix any of these three colors to get any other color, right? So blue and yellow make green, red and blue make purple and then red and yellow make orange and then you kind of offshoot from that whether you want to go darker or lighter uh, with that so uh, you want to have a pet these five paints and I just use a paper plate at our parties that way it's easy to clean up uh, you don't have to worry about washing out a palette and everything like that uh, you'll want to have some paper towels so that you can dab off the water in your paintbrush. And with your paintbrushes, I just went with a small, medium, and large paintbrush. And then I've got uh, half a cup of water here. So, uh, yeah, like I said, I'll interact with you guys once I get this up and running, but I don't have it right now because we're busy still setting up camera equipment for the first show. So, 
uh, what we're going to do, I'm going to do this painting with you guys today. And I'm going to walk you through it step by step. The first, and I'm going to tell you right now what we're going to do step by step. And then we'll, I'll walk you through it one step at a time, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is paint the sky. And it's going to go from dark to light. And I'll show you how to make that transition. And then we'll go ahead and add in the clouds. Then we will come in and paint the hill side but not the grass just we're gonna paint in the hill and then we're gonna come in and we're gonna outline your light tower and then at the and then the last well not the last step but then after that we're gonna paint in the water then come back add in the stripes and the lighting and then we're gonna come in and add the grass so after that's all done you will have a beautiful masterpiece just like this okay so let's have some fun uh if you're sitting at home and you've got kids i'm gonna try to pause this here after we get done with the sky and the hillside we're gonna give about a five to ten minute break just to i'm gonna answer some questions if you guys have questions and uh kind of do just some fun chat while we let those dry before we move into the rest of the painting okay so the first step you're gonna do is I want you to take the large brush that you've got and I want you to dip it in the blue paint. Now you don't want a whole lot. You just want it to be nice and thin across there. It's not all globbed up on the top, right? And you'll notice I use a lot of very technical terminology while I'm painting is globbed up and things like that, right? So the first step that I want you to do is to take that blue in your brush and I just want you to put a little bit of water on it. Can you stop your, just, you're, you're very distracting. Okay, and then I just want you to come across this top like this and paint the top all the way across and then bring it down like this. And you don't want a whole lot, right? You just want a little bit. You want it to come all the way down into the painting like this. So you're only going about an inch or so into the painting uh, before you pick up the white. Now you don't have to, you know, get the, you don't have to get the blue out of your brush. Like you don't need to wash it out. So just pick up that white paint, right? And if you notice, I just dipped it in. So it didn't even get any blue paint on there because it was so dry on there already. So then you're just gonna come right underneath it. And if you notice, I hold the brush up on the metal part. It gives me a lot more control, right? So if you look at this, I'm only getting about this much distance in there. If I pull it back on my hand like this, then I do the same motion. I'm getting so much more distance. So when you hold it up on the metal part, that's when you're gonna get a lot more control. And you're just gonna come back and forth like this, right? And see how I'm making these long strokes all the way back and forth. Now be careful on your edges. If you're up on a can on an easel like this and, you and you're and you using a canvas panel like what we provide, then you're going to, when you come across the edge, you, you can have a tendency to fling paint, right? Ooh, calm down. Uh, and fling paint across there. So you just wanna go nice, very easy and light all the way to the top and then bring it back down and bring it back up and bring it back down. So it makes this beautiful blend. And as you can see here, I'm kind of running out of paint, but I got a lot of white paint right here on my brush. So I'm gonna kind of press that white paint down into it, use the tip of the brush to smooth it out, right? And now most of my brush is dry with the paint. So now I can pick up white paint again. And this time I'm picking up quite a bit of white paint and I'm gonna bring it right underneath and come up, right? And come up on this side and now I'm gonna go all the way across. So if you watch how my hand moves, I go up on one side to make sure I get that side covered and then come down and go up on this side and then across to smooth it out, right? So the main thing is that you're getting one side done and then you come over, you do the second side and then you blend it across very slowly. You can get the paint on your edges here like that. Oops. And see how it just blends right out. As long as the paint is wet, both paints are wet, 
it's going to blend super nice. So you're going to bring this all the way down. If you look at this is about your halfway point on your canvas, right? So you're just bringing it down about an inch or so underneath that, right? To about to this point. So I'm just going to keep picking up my white paint and I'm going to keep blending it in like this. Oh, pause, hang on or else you'll get feedback. Oh, we have no idea how this is working. Can I just turn down the volume? I guess so. Did it work? It worked. Yay, we got it figured out. Thanks for sticking with us. All right, so we're just going to continue here. You're blending it out, and I'm just making it lighter as I go down. It's just going to help. When you go to put the clouds on here in a second, you want this to be pretty light blue, right? Because you still want it to pick up some of the blue from the paint, or you know, from when you're doing the clouds from the paint in the background from the sky, right? But you want it to be very, very light, 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 right? So if you're getting a lot of blue, see, I've got a lot of white in here, but it's still picking up a lot of blue you can see through here. So all I'm going to do is just rinse that brush out. And when you're rinsing the brush, like you, you don't have to be gentle with it. Just smash it down in there. Kind of like you're mad at the bottom of that cup. Just jam it down in there. Like you're mad at your just, husband. Yeah. And then what the main thing you want to do is make sure that you get it nice and rinsed out. And when I, when I dry out the brush, I usually kind of pull the bristles back and forth to make sure I get all that paint water out. Because whenever you're now getting ready to put in your clouds, right? Oh, I'm sorry, yes, go ahead and put in your clouds. So you wanna have that blue mostly out of there because it's already gonna pick up the blue that's on here. So you wanna take your brush, dip it in your blue paint, make sure it's nice and white, okay? And then you just wanna kinda of do this swirl big, very thick paint, but you want to smooth it out, right? You don't want it to be thick as far as, like, if it stands up off your canvas, right? You just want it to be nice and smooth, but thick on there. And you don't have to worry about the line, right? Because that's all going to get taken care of whenever we come to this part where you're drawing out the water. And you're just kind of putting it on there. There's no rhyme or reason to them. You just want to make your clouds a little bit thicker on one side. Kind of stand up a little bit more on one side. And if you want, you can get thick with it. The problem that you're going to run into is if your paint's really thick, then the lighthouse, when you go to put the lighthouse on or the uh, shoreline here, when it comes up into here, then this paint won't be dry. So it'll smear the paint whenever you go to put your lighthouse on. So you can make it thick, but you just want to bring it and kind of smooth it out. That'll make it a lot faster for dry time, which is when we take our break, okay? So just smooth this out. Give it some swirls so that you got a nice cloud look to it, right? And then whenever you're done with that, I want you to rinse your brush out really good again, okay? So you're just going to jam it down in there again. <laughs> and at this point, once you're done with your clouds, you can set your brush down and pick up your drink and take a breath and take a drink. All right. Fantastic. So do we have this up yet so I can respond with people? I don't know if anybody's saying anything. Well, that's okay. Yeah. If you if you know me, say hi. Then I can respond to you. All right. So we've taken a drink. We've rinsed out our brush. We've gotten all of this done so far. Make sure your brush is nice and dry. You just want to dab it out a little bit. Dab it. Dab it. Right? 
That's what the kids do, dab? I have no idea. My kids aren't at the dabbing stage yet so far. Thank goodness. Okay, so I'm gonna teach you how to make light tan. This is probably one of the most difficult colors to mix, okay? Because you're basically using all three colors, red, yellow, and blue as your primary colors, and then you're bringing in a lot of white paint, right? But you still need to save some of your white paint for whenever we do the lighthouse. So on your palette, I want you to just pretend like this half of the white is not you're not gonna use that. You're only gonna use this half over, okay? And I want you to tip your brush in the blue paint, not a lot, and kind of put it right here, and then dip your brush in the uh, red paint. You want more red than you've got for blue. A little bit of blue paint will go a very long way. So you're kind of making a purple right now, okay? Red and blue make purple. And then dip I, when I'm dipping a dark color into a light color, I dip and then pull straight out. That keeps the color, if you swipe it, it's gonna leave behind that color, right? So you mix it like this to get a kind of brownish color. And then I want you to start pulling a lot of white paint into here, okay? So if you notice, when you're doing it at home, you'll see it kind of looks like a gray color. And I have to put this down, otherwise the paint's gonna run off. So as you're mixing, you're gonna keep pulling in little bits of yellow and red and blue and white until you get a light, light tan color. It's probably gonna be a little more yellow than what it is otherwise, okay? So I'm gonna keep mixing. I'll show you what I'm coming up with here as I'm finishing. But I wanna mix the color. Okay, I think I've got it. So if you look here, I've got this nice tan color here. So, hey Debbie, hey Dan. All right, uh, so don't push the, <laughs> don't put the brush in the paint. What? Oh, in my wine, right, yeah. Well, it is non-toxic paint. So if you accidentally dip it in the wrong cup, then, you know, you'll, it'll still be fine. Okay. Joey's trying to direct me over here because I can't see the comments as they come up. So I'm trying to read what he's writing and it's just not working very well. So anyway. I will get that figured out as we go through further new episodes. Let's just keep painting everybody. Okay, so you've got your tan color, right? And you've got a lot on your brush here, which really stinks to just put it in the water and waste it, but you don't want a brush this big. So what I like to do is take the medium size brush and I just kind of scrape it along the brush and then I can scrape it off onto my plate like this. And that's gonna help me save a whole bunch of paint, right? And now you've got a tan color mix that if you wanna go buy little containers, you can put it in so you have a tan next time you wanna use a tan, okay? So now I'm gonna take this tan color, I'm gonna take the large brush that I mixed with after I scraped all the paint off and I'm just gonna stick it in my water. Main thing that you wanna do when you stick it in the water, the reason that you wanna stick it in the water and not just lay it down is that it's acrylic paint so it's gonna dry super, super fast, right? So you're gonna come up a little bit above the bottom of where your line of clouds are. And you're just going to come across, kind of make this wavy line all the way down, and you're going to end up about an inch below, inch above the bottom here, okay? And then I just want you to come in and paint that all the way around, down. And you don't have to be super specific with it. Like, it, the line doesn't have to be perfect, because uh, you're just going to draw, uh, you're just going to paint it down so that you... Uh, can put your lake in here afterwards or your sea I guess is is really what you're doing but what you can do is once you get that line drawn you can switch back to your paint 
brush that still has paint in it that you took out of it and it's probably kind of wet by now so it'll make it spread really easy Ooh, I got some blue in there I don't want that so I'm gonna go ahead and just tamp the brush out real good and get that paint out of there the blue paint that came up right here and I'm gonna pick up some fresh tan paint and pull that through and it'll take care of it as long as you get it on there while it's wet it'll blend right so wet paint and wet paint blend so if it's wet on your brush and wet on the canvas they'll blend together okay otherwise you're just going to be covering it up so you can just pull it down like this and then you just paint all of this in okay just like this I like to sing while I paint. So now you got all of this and you don't have to be really concerned about it, right? So if you notice, again, I, I, I paint it all in and then I come back over it at the end and smooth it out with nice long painting strokes that will even out the texture in it, right? There we go. So now you've got that. Uh, real quick before we take the break, we'll go ahead and add in the lake and then that way all of this can dry while we're on break, okay? So you wanna jam that paintbrush down into the water again and just rinse it out, rinse all that color out. And um, yeah, I, I think it's really weird that I can't log in here to see what's going on. Um, I'm going to try to figure that out on the little break that we have, but I'll still be with you guys here. Um, I, I really love that you guys are sticking with me through the first one here. So what I'm going to do is just pick up blue paint. I've got it on the large brush, and I'm just going to draw a line all the way across. And then I'm going to fill this area in with little back and forth strokes. Now this is where you can choose. You can choose if you want to use the large brush, you can do that. You can also use your medium sized brush if you want to, and that'll give you kind of a different look. So the medium sized brush is what I use here to get this look, this wavy look, right? And it just used blue paint, but as you can see, it can create this texture in itself. So I'm just doing little back and forth, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, just really fast and with quite a bit of paint one two one two back 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 right now before I get to the edge here I want to go ahead and line it out Oops. oh if you guys can hear that that's my dog upstairs going crazy she must have one of her toys so I apologize for that if you can hear it we're just gonna come right along here like this. Do, do, do. I'm just kind of tracing it out. Man, it sounds like we got children upstairs. We just trace it out there like that. And then that way when I come around to the edge, I've kind of got a buffer zone since I'm going really fast back and forth. I just get a little more careful right around that edge, right? So I'm just going to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. All right. All right. So you're just making that all the way back and forth. Right up here as well. Hopefully during the break I can get the puppy calm down and get your guys' comments up so I can respond to you. Uh, so you're just going to get this water put in like that. Just very quickly swish, 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 right? And one thing I see people do a lot is they get super concerned about whether they're swishing the right way or is this the right shade of blue, uh, different things like that. So those are all 
whatever you want it to be, right? Like I can make the whole thing have this texture to it, right? It doesn't really matter. It's all about what you want it to be. I do this because I think it gives it more of a ocean wave type uh, texture, right? But at the end of the day, I mean, you look at pictures by Picasso, um, you know, Andy Warhol, different different artists who kind of take the concept of what we know and twist it in a way. M.C. Escher is a great one, Salvador, Salvador Dali uh, with the melting clocks. They took something that we know and they created it in a way that's that's unique and it and it draws in your attention. So don't the one thing I hate to see is when people get hung up on the idea that they have to have it a specific way, right? I'm teaching this painting in a specific way. But if this isn't where your line is, if it's up here, but your clouds are up here, it's not going to make a difference in the whole scheme of everything, right? Because once I start teaching you where the placement should be for the lighthouse, then you're going to be all good, okay? So I'm going to take two seconds while you guys finish up and make some touch-ups. If you have a stretched canvas like this one, then I always suggest that you go on to the side and finish out your edges like this. Uh, that's what I do in my professional art gallery shows. Uh, so you want to finish out the edges on the side and the top. Um, if you're resting it on an easel, I always suggest just wait and do the bottom at the end because you can take everything and flip it upside down like that and then paint the top at the very end of the, at the end so that all of this is dry, right? So go ahead and do that. I, uh, my video here in front of me has frozen up, so I'm going to take two seconds and hop on through my own personal account and maybe that will be better. In the meantime, I'm going to drink my wine. Ah. And while we're doing this break, if you have children that need to be put to bed, go ahead and put the kids to bed. If you have, if you need a refill because you are just watching and you've already drank your glass of wine, then that's great. Um, what, did you figure something out? No. Oh, okay. Production goes on. Yeah, production's gonna go on. Obviously, this is the first time we've done this, so next time it'll run a little smoother, and each time after, it will be even better. So I am just trying to get in here so I can help answer questions for you guys. Um, Joey, can you go take care of the dog? Mm -hmm. She's throwing a fit up there. Our dog is throwing a fit. Can you go take care of that, please? Thank you. You're awesome. Okay. Let's see if I can get in here now. <laughs> um, Penny looks good. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm trying to scroll down my... Internet's not working so great. Don't put your brush in your drink. Oh, that's what you were talking about, Dan. Um, hi, Dan. Uh, don't put your brush in your drink. Well, it is non-toxic paint, so if you put it in your drink, that's fine, but don't waste the wine. You'll just have a funny colored mouth, which you probably will blend in with the teenagers. And uh, I hope this isn't what you guys are seeing. Oh, there we go. It came, the video finally came back on for me. I don't know if it left for you guys. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Mom. Thanks, Debbie and Dan, for tuning in. And hi, Penny. It looks like we've got about 12 viewers on right now, which is awesome. Super happy you guys are here. Hi, Christine. Hi, hi Dad. Hello. Um, so, we're going to let this dry for a minute. Um, but I wanted to see, I wanted to open this up to questions. If you in general um, I also wanted to let you guys know that um, 
we're going to be doing this every Tuesday night. It is totally just for you guys to hop on and see the experience that we offer and enjoy some time painting at home by yourself in your PJs with your glass of wine or your tequila or your water, whichever one. Uh, I like to always say water or wine will be just fine. Um, and so we're going to give it a couple of minutes and let this dry. And um, yeah, so if anybody has any questions or anything, I've got this finally pulled up that I can start answering questions. It's really different talking to the camera than being at a painting party because at a painting party, everybody's interacting, and this is usually the time where I walk around and I help people, and you know, I'm giving them, I'm giving them tips and tricks and stuff like that. Um, help them blend out if they're not getting a blend and things like that. So first question. Oh, uh, okay. We have our first question. What's next week's painting? Um, next week's painting is on a little sheet of paper on my desk. So I'm going to grab that real quick. <laughs> Wouldn't that, isn't that likely to happen? That's funny. Okay. I got it. week I'm gonna do the Emerald City painting and so it's a painting of the Wizard of Oz scene with the rainbow over Emerald City with the yellow brick road and um, it's probably one of our most popular paintings between kids and adults we're gonna I'm gonna be doing all of that and we're gonna be using the same colors the black white red blue and yellow and uh, we're gonna be doing doing the whole painting and everything like that but if you guys don't have no i hear this a lot from parents uh of kids so if you want to have your kids join that's absolutely awesome let me know i'll instead of wine i will have lemonade or tea if that makes you more comfortable uh for me i it's just fun for anybody of all ages and one thing that i get a lot is that People don't, if they walk into an art supply store, they're overwhelmed, right? So I'll kind of show you what I mean. Um, you have panel canvases, which are flat like these. They're still canvases, gessoed. And you've got 12 by 16 inch. You've got 14 by 18 inch. And every other size in between from... You can get them literally two inch by two inch all the way up. You can get them on stretched canvases. Um, oh, here's another example of a flat panel canvas, six inch by six inch. You can also get other stretched canvases. So these are stretched canvases. And then you can even get a gallery wrap, which is like this thick and on the side instead of like this is a standard. Your gallery wrap would have a thickness this on the side of it and they go up in price and down in price depending on the size and what style of canvas you get and, and everything like that when you walk into a store it can be absolutely overwhelming if you don't know what you're looking for so one thing that we offer is that you can message me I mean any time of day if you're at the supply store you cannot figure it out you can call me and I can help you through that process or you can just go onto our website and we will have a kit available that you can buy. Uh, I'm gonna put that up tonight and it will have all the supplies. So you'll get your paints that you need, the brushes you need, the canvas, everything like that. Uh, but if you don't know and you just wanna go to the store and buy your own stuff, then absolutely just message me. I'm, I'm more than happy to help you guys do this with me once a week. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So. I think we've had a break for long enough, so we're going to move to the next section. 
And uh, this may not be completely dry. It's still got a tiny bit of wetness to it, but it's gonna work. We're gonna, we're gonna move through it and we're gonna use that small brush, right? So this is a small round brush is what I call it. So if you notice the other two brushes that I've used so far are flat brushes. So this one's a round brush. And I'm gonna make, uh, I'm just gonna take on my plate like this and just dip the tip of my brush into the paint and then I'm going to mix it on the edge here into a gray. A very, very, very light, 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 light gray. Okay, this is gonna serve to help us paint the outline of our lighthouse, all right? So whenever you're painting the lighthouse, I want you to come about an inch over from where your water is and about an inch down and I just want you to put a little smile right here. Not like a super happy smile, kind of like a hmm, you're funny. I'm a little annoyed but I'm dealing with your smile, right? So you're just gonna put a little smile right here, okay? And then, and you want it to, there's, I don't know if you guys can see that. I'll kind of make it a little darker for you. But at home, you want it to be a little less uh, dark than this. Otherwise, your white will not cover it. So, sorry. There. Make your smile a little, about this thick. So, I like to call that about three fingers thick, right? So, if you had three fingers and they fit in there, that's about how far you want it to be apart, okay? And then the second thing you're gonna do is come up to the top and you're gonna put the top, okay, but what I'm talking about is this top, not this top, right? So you need to leave enough room to be able to add your lantern at the top of this. So you're just gonna put a line right about here, right? Which is about a hand's length down from the top. So you're gonna go about a hand down come straight up from the center and just put a little mark, right? You don't want it to be too wide because obviously the bottom of the, the lighthouse goes up and, and gets thinner as it goes towards the top, okay? So I'm gonna have to step in front here, otherwise my whole tower will, or lighthouse will be leaning this way. So I'm gonna step over here and I'm just gonna very, very lightly drag my brush and bring it in just a little bit, right? Nothing, nothing too much. You don't want it to be a whole, whole lot. You just want it to be nice and easy. And now I'm gonna bring this down like this. Oh, drag through. Yeah, if that's not dry, that's gonna be a problem. As soon as you notice it, you need to rinse your brush out, pick up your gray, and just start from there. Okay. It's not going to be a problem if it does drag through. We can cover it up with the white paint and the black paint and the gray paint. All right, this is just to give you an outline of where you want your lighthouse to be. Okay, does that make sense? I'll give everybody a second to get those drawn out. I know that can kind of take a minute to kind of place everything. Now, if your paint's just super wet and it's just not working, Take a moment and go hit it with the blow dryer. No, hit it. Turn on the blow dryer and blow dry it. Uh, and that'll dry it out very quickly. You can hit it on high with a hot, like hot air for 30 seconds and it's gonna be great, okay? It's, it doesn't take that long. Acrylic paints don't take long to dry at all, which is why it's super important to keep them in the water when you're not using them. Otherwise, uh, the, these paint brushes will sit out and within minutes they'll dry up. And then at that point, it, takes, it either takes a whole lot of work and time to get them better, or you can just go to the store and buy a new brush and you'll have to throw that one away. And brushes aren't exactly cheap. Uh, so you, you just try to preserve the quality of your brush. Leaving it in the water for the time that you're painting this is not that big a deal, okay? So, we've got the lighthouse drawn out. Now we need to come in and we need to add in our, we need to color it all in with the white paint, okay? So I'm gonna switch back over to my middle size brush and I'm gonna really get the, 
get it, the water in there and kind of jam it down in there again. Look, I'm really mad at the bottom of my cup. And then I'm going to just rinse it out, kind of smush the brushes apart like this. Again, pinching it like this. And that kind of gets very dry and you got a good, nice, dry brush that's clean, okay? So now, the key to this is you want your black line that goes across to be right over this blue part right here. And you're just gonna take it and swoop it up a little bit, right? Not, not a lot, just a little. You're just gonna kind of swoop it. And the black will cover that blue paint, just like that, okay? Now you want to you want to go in and add the next line up, and you want them to be about equal lengths apart. If you're getting a little bit of white in there, that's it's totally totally fine. It's going to add a little bit of dimension to what you're doing. So they don't have to be perfect, right? See how they're kind of messy. At the end, we come in and we kind of refine all of that, right? With the, with the dark, darker edge on it, on this, on the side of it, right? So you're just gonna make sure, make sure you don't go like I did, like way out there, right? So you just come in and keep adding your black paint. Swoop it across. Just like that. Okay, I'm picking up a lot of white paint and I'm getting a lot of black paint on here which probably won't make these real nice and uh, refined. So I'm gonna take that, I'm just gonna rinse it out real quick. Shimmy it back and forth, I kinda like to jiggle it. That's another technical term you'll learn jiggle it and then you're going to pick the brush and pick it back up in the black again and then come up to the next section and pull it down and pull it down just like that okay and this is this is a little lighter gray because it's got more white in it i'm just going to let that sit and then i can come in at, afterwards and put a second coat to really make it black all right, and then the next step is taking that black paint and you're gonna go all the way to the top with it, right? So you're gonna cut it off there, bring it down, and bring it up, and bring it like that, and paint that whole top part in, okay? Trust me, this will all work out. We're gonna come through and paint these all in white. It's gonna be gorgeous, all right. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and add these parts, the black parts of this in, since we're already using this brush and the black paint, okay? So the main thing is that you don't want your paint to be too thick on the brush. So what I like to always do is just kind of scrape it off the side like this, scrape it so it's nice and thin across there, okay? And then what you can do is just take the very little tip of the brush like that, just to load up just the tip the top line, all right? Okay, yes, so now we just wanna take, I'm gonna do it, and I know my hand might be in the way for a second, but just hang on. If you look, I'm going perpendicular to the canvas. If I have my brush slanted like this, it's gonna leave a different kind of line. I want a very nice, thin line. So I'm using the tip of the brush to create a very thin line about a pinky's width above this, right? So if you had a pinky here, you're gonna come right above it, and just put a little line like that, and then you're gonna finish it out like this, with a slight curve, yeah. And then you're gonna come down and put a slight curve across the top, connect those lines on the edges like that, okay? So you, and then you just come through like this on the edges 
and put little lines in. All of this has to be perpendicular. Otherwise, you're going to get thicker lines than what you want, and it won't look right. Okay? And then you're going to paint this center piece in like that where the edge of the lighthouse comes up, just like that, okay? Yay! Are you guys having fun? I'm so excited, we've got 14 people. Tell Spencer Bishop hi. Tell him where you can get supplies from. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't even realize people were commenting and stuff because for some reason it's not refreshing on my page and, and everything's kind of stuck. So, um, I guess Joey informed me that somebody wanted to know about where they can go get supplies. Spencer. Uh, Spencer, okay. So, Spencer, you can get supplies. Uh, tonight, I'm going to be putting a kit on our website that's just that you can buy for live painting parties. And we're going to be doing these every Tuesday night. Uh, but if, you're, if you don't want to buy off of our website, you can go to any Michaels, um, Craft Store, Hobby Lobby, uh, Joanne Fabrics. Uh, there's a great place downtown called Artisan Craftsman Supply. Um, and you can go in there and buy whatever size canvas you want. You can just order the, special, the specific supplies and then get a different canvas off of our website. But you just need blue, yellow, red, black and white paint and a small, medium, or large brush. And we'll be painting with those each week. Um, so you can go on to applepiepainting.com and on our shop, there will be, tonight, after we get done, I'll put that on there, there will be a Facebook Live painting party kit that you can buy, and we can send it to you. If you're in the Kansas City area, I can just come meet up with you so that you have the supplies, okay? I hope that answers your question. I apologize, I didn't haven't seen uh, these. So, okay, great. Okay, I see that you, you got the word, so yay! We'll get that up for you after this video is done. It'll be sometime tonight, so look for it by the morning tomorrow. Okay, so now we want to put a small curve, right? But you're still wanting it to be with just the tip of the brush, right? Like just the per perpendicular. So I'm just going to curve like that. You don't want it to go up too high. All right. And then you just want it to go straight across like that. And then you're just going to add in your little tiny lines. Which all I do when I do this part is just touch the brush and just slightly, very, very, very slightly wiggle it up and down. So that you can get those nice thin lines all the way across. Okay, so you got those lines in there. And now you're gonna paint this top part, right? So you got these three lines that go up and then one piece that goes over. And that's all you gotta do to finish out the top of your lighthouse. So you got these one, two, three, and then one that goes over the top, just like that. That's all you need to worry about right now, okay? Because obviously we can't put the light and the lantern in the top of the lighthouse yet unless it's dry because if we try to get that yellow mixed with the black it turns green it's very nasty color all right okay and oh thanks jennifer i'm so glad you're having fun yay super i like that s-o-o-p-r i like that super fun all right yay yay well now we need to come in and we need to add the white paint into the areas. So with that same brush, you're gonna wanna really rinse it out good. You can take a minute if you'd like to and go get fresh water, or I don't ever refresh my water because if I just jam it in there enough, <coughs> excuse me, if I jam it in there enough, which I have things enough to picture at the bottom of this cup to jam it in there enough. <laughs> But you jam it in there enough and you dry it out well enough, like really dry it out well, then you shouldn't have any issues with it getting into your paint, okay? So now once you rinse all that out, you need to just grab a thick layer of white paint and paint them in. Try to be careful around the edges where it touches the black paint, okay? 
And then, and then, you, and remember, you're not going to cover it all with this first coat. You're just going to be laying down the first base layer. Okay, so don't get all hung up on the fact that it has to be perfectly white. I even come down like this, around, and down like this, and just kind of fill it in there so you have a nice light color of white and then you're going to come across here and down and then across oh got a little black in there that's going to be all right i'm just going to take my white paint and blend it so it looks like it's a part of it okay now, if you get too much black paint, then you may need to take a second and go blow dry it, okay? That's really going to help you. All right, so now we're going to take this and just pull it across here like this. The parts inside the clouds are a little bit easier because they've already got that white base down from the clouds. So you're just kind of pulling that in across there. And the idea is to kind of move fast, not so fast that you're just being sloppy, but see, I got a little black there. I'm just going to wipe it across, and that's going to give me a little bit of dimension. Ooh, that got really, really, really gray. Okay. Just leave it alone. It's got to dry in order for this to work, okay? So now you're going to take this and pull it across like that. And down. As you notice, I'm being very careful as I can, as much as I can be, to not pick up the black paint, okay? It's just to lay a base coat of white down. So every time I pick up black paint, I'm rinsing it out of my brush and I'm coming back over it with the white paint. And, all right. So as you can see, it's kind of, it's a little bit messy. So now I'm gonna just kind of come through, clean it up a little bit. We're gonna give it a few minutes, okay? Because this all needs to dry now. Before we can go any further, as you can see, we're pulling black in from where it's wet. All of this needs to dry. If you have a hair dryer at home, I strongly suggest that you just take this time while I'm visiting with you to go and, and do it with a blow dryer. I'm gonna take a look back at the Facebook feed and see where we're at. Um, I see that we're almost at nine o'clock. Uh, all we have left to do is finish this up and put in the grass. So we should be finished up here in about the next 20 minutes. If somebody's in a hurry, uh, we can help you. Um, so how many of you have actually been to a pay, Apple Pie painting party? Is there anybody that has painted with me or one of our other artists? And uh, let us know in the comments below. And uh, we'd love to chat with you and kind of see what your experience was with us. We've been doing this now for three years, three and a half years, three, almost four years now. And um, it has been probably the coolest experience of my life. I have learned so much about who I am and uh, so much about why I started this company. And that's, it's the main reason we started doing these videos. I found that I was just managing everything and not being able to paint. And that's really what I love to do. And I love to be able to do this with several other people and uh, just being able to share this experience is the biggest part of why I do this. Um, after, I mean, when we started the company, it was natural that it took off considering we're mobile, we bring it to you, you didn't have to go to a studio or anything like that. And um, so, I, I'm sorry, I, what, yeah, oh, yes, we got Best of KC last year in Pitch Magazine. I, w I wasn't really going to talk to that, but uh, what I was going for 
was the fact that I just enjoyed doing this with everybody. And I'm so glad that you guys are giving me this opportunity and that Facebook in of itself has given me the platform to be able to do this live with you guys and show you how easy it can be to just sit at home and have a glass of wine and enjoy doing something like this. So now that we've kind of let this dry a little bit, we're gonna, if you notice my, my shoreline here is dry. I'm still a little wet on, on the edge here where the paint's a little bit thicker, but most of my sky, all of this is dry. This is pretty much dry except for little bits that are thick paint, and this is all dry here. So I'm imagining by the time we get done putting the grass in, this will be dry and we can finish this out. So let's get started. Let's have some fun. I know, that sounded so fun. Let's have some fun! Woo! Okay, so the two colors that make green are blue and yellow. All right, so I'm gonna take my palette. I'm just gonna take my brush and dip just the little, littlest, tiniest bit, just a little bit of blue in there. And then I'm gonna mix it over here with my yellow and you'll see it start to turn a spring green kind of color, okay? So I've got this spring green, which is not exactly what I want down here, right? I want more of a muted, almost uh, pea green kind of color, I guess would be the best way to say it. So one little tip that you can get from tonight is that two colors that are opposite on the color wheel, and gosh, I wish I had a color wheel to show you. It's two colors that are opposite on the color wheel are going to mix together to make a brown, right? So if you have purple and yellow, like we did earlier, that's how we got this brown tan color, right? So same effect will happen if you have a green and you need to make it more of a darker muted green, then you wanna add the color opposite of the color wheel, which is red. So I'm gonna take the green paint, I'm just gonna dip the tip of the red, I mean, you do not want a lot of red, and you wanna just blend it right in here with this green, okay? So you're gonna blend in the red into the green until you get this kind of a pea green sort of color, right? Oh, this is awesome. Yeah, so you get this nice pea green color, and it's almost like a brown army green is what you end up with. And you're gonna, whenever I do it, I always smash it out so I have a nice, nice tip, the fine tip on this, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna come through and you're gonna draw your lines out. One, two, three, four, and this one kind of splits at the bottom, all right? Oh, I guess we got a little one up here. So let's start with this little one up here. And then this one down here is gonna be right across the bottom like that. And then we're gonna do one a little bit lower like this. And we're gonna kind of bring that up. And then we're gonna start these a little closer together and bring that one down. Cause you don't want them to just be one, two, three, four, like perfect lines. You want them to be a little bit slanted and a little bit wavy in the lines. And then come down here and I'm gonna put a small line there up a little more paint here and then I'm going to come across here and I'm going to have those meet up and go like that okay so that gives me my four lines five lines and now <coughs> excuse me I'm going to come through and I'm just going to darken this green just a teeny bit with the smallest amount of black paint like not this small not this small like this small right like so tiny you can barely run it through your fingers and you're gonna mix it in there and make it a little bit darker and again this is what's really important you want to make sure that you got just this nice nice smooth tip across the top and again perpendicular and you're just gonna come across each line and add little lines in there like this one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve eight ten and you can kind of have them cross over each other, go like this, over and over and over again. You're gonna do that all the way, right? Your whole painting. Now, if you were at a party with me, 
I would not continue finishing doing this. I would be coming around to help you guys. Since we're live though, I'm gonna continue doing this with you guys. And I would love, love to see uh, what you guys are saying. Maybe Joey can come in here and kind of chat with me while I'm doing this about what people are saying and ask me any questions that you guys have about the company, about me as an artist, about painting or art in general. I would love to talk with you guys. Um, Joey, do you do you want to come talk to me while I'm doing this? Tell me who's saying what. Uh, yeah, no, we're doing. People I don't think having, anybody can hear you. People are having a great time. They're Yay. painting along. They're having fun. Awesome, Thank you. awesome. It's Jennifer's daughter that's oh, painting fun. along with us, and she's having so much fun. Yay! Good. I, I just hope that we can. Hi, Jennifer's daughter. Not I sure think, what your I, name is. I think that's who it was. I might have misread it, but you know, it. it I think everybody's having a great time. Do you want to get on here and see if anybody's asking questions, and then you can read them to me, or do you want to read them to me from in there? Yeah. Or what? I don't. It doesn't matter to me. I just want to be able to interact with everybody, and we'll have to figure out something new for next week, because. I need to be able to see what everybody's saying. Hope you got Carrie saying she's done the flip flops and beach one from two years ago. She oh, fun! She loves having painting parties. I love the paint, uh, the flip flop painting. So there's a very cool story with the flip flip flop painting. What's her name again? Did you say? Oh, uh, that's Carrie. Carrie. Carrie Ann. So I have a really cool story about the flip flop painting party. So it was about this time last year. We had a painting party uh, that called, it was a bachelorette party. And they called and uh, wanted to know if we could do the party, of course we can. Um, and they told us that one of the guests at the party is uh, legally blind. She can see large, large amounts of color, but not very defined. And they were doing the flip-flop painting for the bachelorette party and so she called me talked to me about it she said you know we really want her to be a part of it but obviously we understand if she can't be uh so what we did that was so cool we took and we t outlined the flip-flops and the whole painting in uh glue so that when she felt where the lines were she knew where to paint inside of it was it was one of the coolest things I think that we've done at a painting party before that, that we had never attempted to do, you know, I mean, obviously somebody calls you and says, uh, my friend is blind, can you help her paint? It's quite an obstacle to overcome. So that painting for me uh, just has some special meaning to it. I, I love that we got to paint with her. Her painting turned out fantastic, by the way, um, of course, I, I all they all had a blast they had a great time and and uh, we were just super happy to be able to do that for her so I'm glad that you've got to experience that painting because it, it holds a little special meaning to me that's Jennifer her daughter's name is Emmy and say hi to Emmy is your daughter's name Emmy Jennifer. if so I'm sorry Jimmy Jennifer oh Jennifer is your daughter's name Emmy I'm sorry I thought he was saying Jimmy Jenny so you, I'm just taking this this medium sized brush and I'm just making these little lines back and forth, up and down, creating this grass along here, right? Super fun, super fun. And this is the part where you tell me what's going on. Well, Carrie said, wow, what a way to include everybody because of the comments. So we can have a painting party across the world. Yes, we can. Everybody can tune in. Paint with me. Oh, they can hear you. Yeah, no, but I'm oh. not the star you are. Oh, I'm not a star. <laughs> I just think it's great to be able to do this. I think anybody can be able to do this. It's, you know, we've done them for kids' parties. We've done them for senior living parties. 
we have all sorts of reasons that we do these painting parties and uh, we've done them for, gosh, we did a large group party that was almost a hundred people. We've done small groups that are four, you know, um, so it really goes and all ages, all sizes. It's, you know, and I, I had somebody the other day say to me that uh, these are just for women. Actually, I hear that quite often. Uh, is that men say, oh, these are these, those are just for women. Men don't do those uh, and things like that. And I, I got to say, I beg to differ. If you think about all of the artists that have been famous through time, they're all men, right? Picasso, Michelangelo, um, all these guys, have, they're all painters. I mean, I can think of one that uh, is a woman and that's, uh, Georgia O'Keeffe photographer. Uh, oh, I guess, I'm sorry. Georgia O'Keeffe painted the flowers and Gettys was the photographer with the babies. Like everybody's seen the friends episode where he's got the and Gettys. So I don't know who the famous baby is. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So anyway, we would love Emmy. If Emmy, you could share. It, yeah. yeah. Okay. We did confirm it. We'd love to see your final masterpiece. Please post a picture in the comments if you're nine painting along. I'm sorry, what, Joey? She's only nine years old. And oh, only nine along. years old. Yay, Having that's fantastic. So much fun. Yes. Well, hello, Emmy. Thanks for joining us. I'm going to get this grass on here real quick. And then I'm going to show you the one that we're going to be doing next week so you can tune in with us. Okay. So we got the grass in there, right? And this is the painting that we'll be doing next week, just so you know. So this is it. This is the Emerald City, and we've got the Yellow Brick Road and the poppies and the city and the rainbow. Oh, sorry. I didn't realize you guys could see it down there. <laughs> so that's the painting we'll be doing next week. And, uh, yeah. So now we've got the grass put in here, and the last thing we're going to do is finish out the lighthouse and put the light in it. And then uh, we will finish up the night so you all can move on with your evenings. So again, I'm going to take that same brush and I'm just going to rinse it out really good. As a matter of fact, we're going to use both the, the two smaller brushes for the final portion of this painting. You want to make sure that's really dried out. See, I've got a, quite a bit of green paint, so I'm going to try to get this out even more. I really, I really like to get mad at my water cups. It really helps a lot, right? So now when I pull it together, I've got barely any green in there. It's all going to be good to go. So now I'm going to take this white paint. If you notice, everything's pretty much dry. You got a little bit that you got to watch out for, but now you just come over. See how it makes it nice white paint. Okay over. Oh, that one just does not want to cooperate with me. I think it's because I haven't given it enough dry time and I don't have my hair dryer here to be able to do that. And I don't want to do that on the video, but if you have a hair dryer at home, I'm sure you're not dealing with this issue that I am. So again, every time I pick up black paint, I rinse my brush out so that I can come back with fresh, clean white paint for the next area. And I'm going to come across like this. Oh, this is, there we go. I was going to blend the gray on anyway, but it seems to be working just fine. Okay. And now, let's see, that's pretty much dry. So I'm just going to come, I'm going to paint it up and down to get that white coat in there. And then just swipe it make it nice and smooth and have that same directional flow all right and this one here paint it on all right I think we pretty much got it here this one's just being stubborn Okay, so now what I'm going to do is kind of 
outline, right? Like that, that edge looks really kind of messy. So I'm gonna kind of clean it up. And I'm gonna clean that up with a dark gray. So you can use the same color gray that you used earlier to outline it if it's still wet. Otherwise, just mix a little bit of black and white together. And then all you're gonna do is just kind of come down the edge. Again, holding your brush perpendicular to the canvas. And you're gonna swipe in that gray on the white areas, right? Just like that to give it some shadow. Oh, got some more. There we go. Give it some shadow like that. Now you're going to take your little tiny brush, right? You have a small, medium, and large brush. You're going to take the small brush. All right. And I'm just going to kind of clean up the edges of the black paint. So I'm going to have to step in here for a second. I'm just going to bring it down to where it looks nice. All right. This is just the cleanup step. Every painting has a cleanup step at the end where you come through and you fix those lines. Again, holding the paintbrush up here and keeping it nice up against there and just moving it very nice and slow. I cannot stress enough how much I use what I like to call angel touches when it comes to painting. And that means just using the tip of the brush. There's no reason to use all of the bristles unless you're really trying to put down a real thick line, okay? So I'm just using the tip of the brush very lightly to outline it. What, Joey? Nothing. Okay. Inappropriate. See how I'm just making these black areas more black and defining them a little bit more so you get a nice look. <coughs> Excuse me. Pull that down and across. And up. There we go. If you notice how silent it is now, it's because everybody's concentrating. Moms, this is what happens at children's birthday parties. So if you're used to bouncy houses and trampolines where the kids are running around like chickens with their heads cut off, screaming everywhere, you don't have that with a painting party. It's all quiet, like bliss, like hey, bliss. Tell Carrie Ann. She asked, what day and time will this be going on and where can we find the supply list? Sure. Okay, Carrie Ann, uh, you can tune in every Tuesday night. I'll be doing a new painting at 8 p.m. Central Time. And uh, there's, a po there's a list of supplies that you need uh, on the post that's on our Facebook page or tonight I will be putting up on our uh, on our website applepiepainting.com in the shop there will be a specific thing where you can just order the supplies right through there and it will have the canvas the brushes the paints and everything you need for each one of our painting parties it'll be a live painting party kit that you can order and we can ship out to you or if you're in the Kansas City area I can make a hand delivery to you uh, at any point this week or any any other week following um, I hope that answers your question. If not, please let us know. Um, I, I can help you with any of that stuff. If you'd rather go to a store, I can help direct you on what supplies specifically to get at the store. Um, okay, so the last thing we're going to do is put the light in our lighthouse, okay? So you've got your paint palette. I'm going to take a little bit of yellow paint and not a lot here. And I'm going to use this white paint over here and I'm going to make a lemon yellow, right? So you want it to be a super, super light, light yellow. 
Okay, so I just keep mixing it until it gets to be the light yellow that I want. Now this is not a specific, like if your yellow is a little bit darker than mine, that's that's gonna be okay, it's still a light in the light house. And you're just gonna paint it right up in these, in these areas here, okay? So I want you to come in with that thin little brush, and you're just gonna brush it into those blank areas. You do not have to brush it in so that it's completely solidly filled in that area. You're gonna brush it in like that. And then you just wanna bring it down a little bit in between these. Just like that. And drop the brush in the water. And there you go. You've got your masterpiece. There's your lighthouse by the sea. So please leave comments. I know some people couldn't tune in live, but you're watching this later. We would love to have you come back with us next week. If you would like to have me or anybody else come to your house for a painting party, I would so much enjoy that. I, I absolutely love doing what I do. Uh, yes, Joey. What day? Next week. Yeah. Tuesday at every 8 p.m. every single Tuesday will be set up right here next week We are doing the Emerald City painting. Mm. This is the painting. We'll be doing next week. Dorothy. Where's Toto? This is a perfect What Dorothy? Where's Toto? Oh, yeah, Dorothy. Where's Toto? Tornado season. Yeah, tornado season. <laughs> That's right So we're gonna be doing this painting and it's it's great for people of all skill levels, all ages. Uh, we actually just did this party on Sunday with a bunch of kids and they absolutely enjoyed it. They loved it to pieces. You can see the picture on our Instagram page, which is Apple Pie Painting. Um, so follow us on Facebook and tune in each week. I will be posting everything by morning uh, as far as where you can buy supplies on our website, applepiepainting.com, if you want us to give those to you uh, or get a supply list. I'll also be posting the link to get the reminder for next week's party because uh, Facebook Live will only let me schedule one week in advance. So I have to do it after we end this segment here. Uh, but be, keep looking, and if you need anything at all, please let me know. You can message us on our Facebook page. You can call us at 913-602-8296 or at info at applepiepainting.com. We'll see you all next week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Mwah! I love you guys. I love my supporters, and I love all of you. I'm so excited to paint again with you next week.